In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Halloween UGC concept. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make bat wings. This is going to hopefully be super simple, and I hope you find this helpful. If you do find it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. Comment down below more tutorials you want me to do for you guys. And yeah, let's get started. So you're going to want to get started by getting a dummy. To get a dummy, you just want to go into Roblox Studio and just open a normal base plate. Once you've got this normal base plate open, I like to delete the spawn location, plugins, rig builder, and then import a block rig. So it's just one of the default plugins, rig builder, should be there, something like that. And then go to the dummy here, click on it. And then go to the origin position, do 0, 3, 0. And there you should see it's in the center. Right click on the dummy here, export selection. And then you want to export it to your files. So you just make sure you remember where you saved that because you're going to need it in Blender. Because we're going to go to Blender here now and do file, import, wavefront, obj. You want to locate that file and add it. You make sure you click the obj. There's like an obj one. There's an obj and an mtl. You want to make sure you click the obj. And now if you want your settings to be like mine... Uh, go to like see if you, you see here there's wireframe solid texture mode rendered so you want to go to solid mode and by default it should look something like this this is what default blender looks like you want to go down to click this little drop down here go to flat flat looks best flat turn on cavity turn on shadow make sure you've got this this type i think is on world by default change it to both and then, yeah, just copy these settings, basically. And then if you want to see the texture as well, you can turn on texture like that, and you can actually see the model's texture through, even in solid mode. But anyway, you want to, want to go into front view by pressing the 1 key on your number pad. As you can see, we're looking at the back. So just, so just click on your dummy, do R to rotate, Z to lock it to the Z axis, and then type 1 80 to flip it 180 this is only if yours is flipped just click number one on your numpad and see if it's looking flipped on and there we go we've got our dummy in step one number one complete so next we want to start making our actual concept i would usually encourage you to get some reference for your uh, like model you're going to make so i'm going to go do that now so i search up cartoon bat wings to get some inspiration and i really like these three one two three they're really really cool See, I think, I think these look really nice. I might make this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image. And then I'm going to go into Blender and import that image. You can either drag and drop it from your files. Or you can do add em, uh, image reference and then find it in your files. And you'll get a reference image like this. You can trace stuff. But I would recommend you don't trace stuff just because tracing is bad. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going we're gonna to go here and just kind of take some inspiration from this. So I'm thinking to start with just to go and get a cube. Go into edit mode, delete, and then collapse edges and faces. And this way, I will be able to get a nice singular vertice. I'm going to start with, I think, the kind of like wing shape. It kind of cuts in. So by doing E, I can extrude that singular vertice and create that kind of shape that I want to go for. So right now, I'm kind of creating this light purple thing. The kind of thing that goes like round, 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 round. And then I'm going to do the edge bits. Okay, so as you can see there, I'm going to kind of reposition this now, and that is how it is looking. Next, I need to now also kind of create the rest of the way round. So it seems like curl up a bit. You can also go with your own proportions if you want. I'm going to try and get a little bit of my own unique like proportion ideas in here, but for the most part, I am going to be using the reference I've got. I'm just going to go here and alt click. So if you go on the, me the, the loop, alt click to select the loop and then press F to fill it, and that will fill it as, as you can see like that. And I'm also going to move it back a bit like so. And now we want to do these lines. And these lines, I'm going to show you a really good way to do it. So I'm going to get one of these vertices here and do Shift D and then click over here. And then with that one vertice selected, I'm going to press P and then Selection. This will basically make it. So now this is one object and this is another you can see in the workspace. So now I'm going to use this vertice. I'm going to go to Edit Mode, Move It. I'm going to move it now to kind of like where I want these lines to be. So if I go here and it starts like where the, these wings are in the back, and I'm going to create a line. So I'm going to kind of follow this way around. Roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect here. This can be a lot rougher and you can edit it afterwards. As you can see here, I've kind of created this way around. I'm going to add a few more loop cuts here to create a nice effect there. I'm really liking how that's looking. I'm going to add the rest of the lines now. Okay, so now if I go and hide this dummy, you can kind of see how we've got two separate objects going on here. And now you want to make sure you've got selected this one, um, the, the second one we made just now. And go into object mode, click on the wrench, the modifier, add modifiers, 
and add a skin modifier. As you can see with the skin modifier, it creates this kind of like mesh like around it, it's kind of weird. But you're gonna go back into edit mode, go to wireframe, so can you see it, and then press A to select all the vertices, or you can just drag a box. Okay, so once you've got everything selected, do Control A, and it'll see you'll see it kind of shrinks it. This looks really cool. So as you can see, we're starting to achieve that look. However, you can now deselect everything by pressing A again, and then start selecting some of these verts here, and do Control A to make these ones thicker. Because as you can see here, the reference we've got like a thicker bit here. So I'm gonna go here and move this one over a bit. Control A, shrink it, shrink it, shrink it, and we make this bit thicker like that. Control a, and then just kind of go a bit bigger. As you can see now, that's got like a really nice cool effect. And I could even, I think, yeah, I'm gonna add some more loop cuts here to kind of increase the resolution. It's something like that's looking really good now. You can also go and add a bevel modifier, and this will give you even more detail there. As you can see, however, you do get some issues with the topology around these areas. It does glitch a bit. And you don't really want to be getting that when you don't need it. But actually, yes, it's starting to really come together. I think I'm gonna go to the end here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a bit thicker. Um, on these end ones, just a bit like that. And then also make these ones here a bit thinner. Like zoom in like that. I think that's looking really cool now. I'm liking how these wings are turning out. As you can see here, it has some nice little horn bit there. Like I I'm gonna add that now. So I'm just gonna do this by adding a mesh cylinder. I'm gonna make it 10 vertices, move it up, scale. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go something a bit bigger rotating it and stuff around here. And then edit mode, alt click, select, and kind of create this little look like this. As you can see, that is kind of coming together now. I really like how these wings are looking. And now it's ready to, I think, start wrapping it up the model. So we're gonna start by getting this um, like skin bit and then clicking the down arrow, apply, and this will apply the modifier. Now you've got the mesh done. There are a few topology issues here which we do want to fix. I'm going to do this by just selecting these faces and just doing delete only edges and faces. I'm going to reconstruct this area. And by the way, guys, this isn't a necessary thing. You don't have to do this, but this is just good practice. Because, you know, I'm a bit picky about the topology and stuff. I want to make sure that it's actually good. And now that is looking good. I'm going to go and select everything face shade smooth here just to shade it smooth nicely, stuff like that. And then go. And this bit is now done. I'm gonna go back and open this one back up. As you can see right now, this is like flat. We're gonna quickly just go to the add modifier and then add a solidify modifier. It's super simple and it just makes it thicker. I'm also gonna go into the side view here and just move it a little bit by doing G and Y. And as you can see, that's now centralized. I'm gonna go click on that and then do the little drop down, apply, and that modifier's applied too. Now you can go here, select everything and do control J. And that is now one mesh. It's looking all right, I'm gonna to go to the object data properties and do normals and then tick the little auto smooth box and I think that looks good you can adjust this value a bit if you want it a bit more smooth as you can see I'm gonna change it to 50 I usually like to do around the 50 realms because they're just a little bit better a little bit smoother and now we're gonna go to the dummy and get it back up I do want to make this kind of connect so I'm gonna make this loop thing here I'm gonna make it um, rotate a bit like that I'm gonna select this loop just kind of like merge it all into one and then keep extruding bit like this. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And then if I go into the top view and then do G and X to move it just along there. I'm doing edit mode so I don't move the origin. And now you can see that looks really nice. And I can just click on it, go back to modifiers, add modifier, mirror. And as you can see, we've got our wings. I'm going to quickly go and show you guys if you do have an issue, like it looks something like this, or maybe it looks like this nothing um change the mirror properties change the axis so see x is normal sometimes you have to do y um, or z but usually just do x and it should mirror fine also if your mirror looks different if your mirror is looking something like this you can literally just go to mirror objects and then select your dummy and as you can see it fixes the problem but yeah anyway that is everything we want to do now um the thing is mirrors we're going to apply the mirror and there we have some wings so one final thing before we get to texturing that I'm going to show you guys. This is 5,000 vertices. That is no good. You don't have to have it this high. And honestly, when you have a skin modifier, the resolution, you can change. But I'm just going to go here and just delete the delete these loops. So you select these and just do delete vertices and then select this loop and then select this loop. And do control E, bridge, bridge loops. You can see it works. Um, you have to do this manually. Usually, you can do the dissolve tool, but dissolve doesn't always work well. So I do delete and dissolve edges. As you can see, it causes a few issues here. Okay, I just realized something, guys. 
I went idiot. Um, so when I was looking at it before, I had the dummy in the space, so it isn't actually 4,700, it is 1,300. But I still want to do this because UGC limits are 1,200 vertices. So you do still want to like, you know, get them all, get them all better. But as you can see here, you can see the difference between the bits where I haven't deleted the random loops and I have. Okay, and I'm back. As you can see here, this is much, much nicer now. And whilst there is a massive end on there, it's flat, shouldn't matter. And look at the vertices, 300. Now we just need to get the dummy back in. Let's go and let's mirror this thing. Literally 600 vertices. That is what you call a nice item. You could literally add, you could have four of these wings. You could, do, you could do front and back wings. But yeah, I'm really happy that has come out so far, but now we're gonna get to texturing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to texture it with a gradient palette. However, I know gradient palettes aren't the most popular among a lot of people. I personally don't like them, but I just know for you guys watching, it's easiest for you guys to learn with a gradient palette. And then maybe once you've got good modeling, then switch over to the likes of Substance Paint or maybe doing your own textures in Texture Paint in Blender, or maybe Photoshop, Photo P, Paint.net, something like that. I'm happy to do tutorials on those things in the future if there is demand. I don't know if anyone actually wants tutorials on like how to use Substance Painter because it's paid. But anyway, I'm going to show you here, what we're going to do is, we're not going to apply the mirror just yet, because then we don't have to texture them both. We're going to just go here, L, to select this. We're going to go, we're going to go first and go to this checkered ball, new. Base color, click the little yellow dot, change it to image texture, do open. This is where you're going to want to open a color palette. For palettes, I'd recommend the palette made by this guy, Infenzia. This palette is his really good gradient palette is great loads of people in the Roblox room to use it it is royalty free for far from where so you can use this in commissions and stuff i will link this dropbox link in the description to get his gradient palette and that's what we're going to be using for this tutorial so what you want to do is basically just open the link in the description right click save image as remember where you save it and this is where in blender you're going to want to go and then do the open and then find the palette. So once you've got that added, you can see I've got it here. I typoed it in my files, I'm sorry. But basically, as you can see, it looks a bit weird. But what you want to do is select your mesh, go into UV editing, and this is where you should see the palette come up. And then if you go to your mesh here, the easiest way to do this is to do the three different parts. So I'm gonna do this big part first, and if you hover over it with your mouse and press L, it'll select it. So I do L and then do U, project from view. You'll see here it comes up in the project, like in the um, UV thing. I'm gonna press S to scale down and I'm gonna do black and white wings. And I think I'm gonna do like a darkish shade, a bit like that. And then I'm gonna go press A to deselect and then L to select this kind of like edge thing. Do U, project from view and then press A in this panel and then just scale, scale down with S and then do this. So something like that I think looks really cool, that kind of like dark feel. And then I'm gonna go and press A again to deselect and then press L to select this little horn bit. Do U, project from view. And then I'm gonna go and do, I think white looks good. Yeah, white almost looks like teeth. I could even do something like teeth all the way along the, the wings. That could look really cool. Yeah, I like how that looks. But yeah, you can get creative, make your Halloween concepts. Please tweet them to me at samroblox underscore. I'd love to see what you guys are making. And yeah, I, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to find out how to get this model into Roblox, watch this video on screen now. It shows you how to export your model and import it to Roblox. So yeah, that's it. Please watch our video. See you in the next one.